this video, I want to show you how to create organize and practically use your very own war room prayer binder using some of the prayer planner printables that I've created. Makes it super simple, takes a lot of the work out of it. Now, if you're new to this idea, a war binder is like a mobile prayer station. So instead of you needing to create a war room, you're creating a war binder. It's something that once you have it all set up and put together, you can take it anywhere at any time, wherever you need it. You just need to update it. So it isn't like a planner that you've got to, you know, fill out forms every week and that kind of thing. So I don't want you to get this idea that you're adding some kind of huge responsibility onto your plate that you're going to have to keep up on. No, this is something that once it's set up, it's ready to go. You just add to it as you see fit. Now, if you and I are just meeting for the first time, my name is Lisa Cook. I'm with For His Beloved Ministries, where our aim and our goal is to help you connect with the heart of God through the Word of God so that you can fulfill the plan of God. And central to God's plan for your life is prayer. It is an integral part of God's plan and heart for you. So we want to cultivate a prayer life that is organized and consistent and strategic so that we can move some mountains and alter some destinies. Amen. Okay, let's go ahead and get right into it. So the first thing that you're going to want to do in creating your war room prayer binder, of course, is you're going to need to decide which size of binder you want to use. Now I'm using here an A five planner. This is brand new. I just purchased it so that I would have a fresh um, start. I can make a fresh binder. And this is before any of my personal information is going into it. I just felt like that would be the best way to do this so that I'm not revealing um, my, you know, personal and private prayers that will be going in here shortly. And this way I could walk you through the process. So once you decide, of course, which planner, which size you want to use, and like I said, this is an A5, then you're going to want to make sure that you have plenty of filler paper. And what I did, because I ordered the A5, is I actually ordered paper on Amazon that's already pre-punched, already has the holes in it. And then um, that way I could then print off on this paper the inserts. And I'm gonna, that's what I'm gonna be going over with you because these are what I have created so that anybody can make themselves a war room prayer binder with all the different components and have pretty much everything they need to have a really consistent, organized, and strategic prayer life all in one place. And remember, we're creating something that's going to be very portable, something that you can take anywhere. I usually spend about 45 minutes to an hour on the treadmill every single day. And I like the idea of being able to put this right there in front of me and I can uh, work through the different sections, whatever I plan for that day and just pray through it in a very consistent, organized and strategic way. Because remember, the more, the more we do it this way, the more our faith will grow and the more we're praying, we're going to be able to move some mountains and alter some destiny. So this is a very worthwhile investment of your time and energy without being overwhelming and without feeling like you've just got to keep up and maintenance something else. Because once this is put together, you're just going to simply do an upkeep on it. You can add different things to it to kind of freshen it up every once in a while. But for the most part, it will be complete and you can just you know, pack it up and take it with you anywhere at any time. You have this portable war room prayer binder without having to set up an entire room, right? So that's a good deal. Okay, so once you've decided on what size you're going to use, then you're going to get your inserts and you're going to print off um, this planner, all these planner pages. And there's, I have these sets on my Etsy shop um, that you can easily download and whatever one you choose to get, it comes in all the sizes that you could probably need. We have A4, A5, which this is an A5. There's the big happy planner size, which is letter size, the classic happy planner size, which I believe also would work for a half binder if you wanted to do that. Um, I also have a lilac design and I'm always updating, but I also have a plain one. So I know some of you, you like to put in your own artwork 
Um, but for somebody like me, I like it pretty, I like it consistent, I kind of like it clean looking, and I like to add some embellishments of my own. Um, so anyways, there's those alternatives there for you. So what this is modeled after though, is it's modeled after the acts prayer method, and that's adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. Adoration, confession, thanksgiving, and supplication. And so this is divided up with dividers that I've made to uh, mark those sections off. And so what I did to make the dividers, and this is really easily done, all you have to do is go and get yourself, if you want to do something like this, which is pretty simple, just go and get yourself from like Hobby Lobby or Michaels, some of this pretty um, kind of thicker cardstock paper. I think it's like 60 cents a sheet. And then what you're going to do, I already had some, so I just used what I had. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take just your... Um, your pages that you have already for your planner, the right size, and then you can just make these dividers a little bit larger than your planner pages to really section them off well. And then you can just punch your holes. You can use a single hole punch. Once you have your guide, then you can just make more that, um, you know, you just lay over top and make them that way. I also have one of these cute little hole punchers that works for an A5, A4, or um, I think maybe even a different size. But anyways, you can get one of these, but you don't have to have one of these. I just like it for convenience. And so once you have that and you decide um, how many sections you're going to want, and you'll, you'll see, we're going to go through these sections right now. But what I did is I began, of course, with the adoration, which is worship, right? So we're going to begin with worship. And I I blended worship and thanksgiving. And so I'm starting off with just a couple of pages, but I also made one of these little prayer pockets that I put on here. And I'll do another video where I'll show you how to make one of these little prayer pockets. You can actually make them out of an envelope quite easily. Um, or you can also use just a pretty piece of paper. And I'll show you how to do that very simply. You can make a little prayer pocket that can go in here as well, where you can slip in um, some different things to kind of help you in your in your time of prayer or worship. So in this case, I'm going to actually be, I haven't made them yet, but I'm going to be making some cards that will go in here that actually highlight the different names of God. I love the redemptive names of God. I love to take time meditating on his redemptive names and um, who he is for me personally. In fact, last night I just did an entire teaching. I do a Wednesday, or I'm sorry, I do a Tuesday night live Bible study. And the theme of that Bible study was how to fall in love with Jesus over and over again. In fact, I'll link that up in case you might be interested in watching that. But, but one of the keys to that is simply acknowledging God in his greatness for who he is for you personally. And when you do that, when you connect who he is for you personally, it really stokes the embers of your love relationship with him because you're responding to his love for you. So, so worship and adoration is such a critical component of our prayer time because it helps us to magnify God. It helps us to better see him for who he is so that when we actually pray, when we get into the supplication part of our prayer time, we're not praying from a place of, um, of unbelief. We're not praying from a place of where our faith is feeling really small, but your faith really gets enlarged in worship when you really begin to see who God is and who he is for you, because you know, if he is that for you, he also will be that for anyone that you're praying for. And so you can pray big, bold prayers when you take time first to worship. And so anyway, so I've got this and I've also got, what am I thankful for? I just think it's good to kind of keep a running list of things you're thankful for. You can add some extra things on an additional page. You can add some extra inserts here as you move along. You don't have to just be restricted to this. You can even print out a verse that, um, that you would pray and you can put that in there. And on this page, I would just put, you know, whether it's a passage you might want to print out, a promise. Like I said, I'm going to 
be making some prayer cards that will go in here that highlight the different names of God. Those will also probably be available on my Etsy shop because once I create something that I like to use, I like to share it with others as well. But you can put worship songs here. I usually have worship music playing in the background that I'll spend a little time praising the Lord through and worshiping Him and engaging and just enjoying that time. Also included in the prayer planner kit are these pages that are just lightly lined so that you can write on them whatever um, your heart feels led to write. I think it's good once in a while just to use one to write out a love letter to the Lord, expressing your love and your desire and your thanks for Him. So including those, and I usually will always keep a few also in the back as extras. I'll have a few extras of those printed out so I can use them as I feel led. And then here I have a list of answered prayers. Remember, we're praying because we're believing God is going to answer prayers. And we want to take time to note those answers to prayer because when we do it, dramatically affects our faith level. It gives us the confidence and the courage and the encouragement and um, all that's needed in order to continue to pray bold, audacious prayers for people and situations and circumstances and even our over our own future and families. And so making sure this is a major part of having this binder and having this journal is that we want to begin tracking and tracing the hand of God as he's answering those prayers for us. And then the next section that I have, and of course, again, following the Acts model is the area of confession. Now, here's the thing. A lot of people when they think of confession, they often just think of the negative side of confession, but there's actually two sides of confession. One is, yes, where you're confessing anything that the Holy Spirit might bring to mind, where you've gotten out of sync, out of the will of God, where you are in need of, like First John 1, 9 says, to confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You may want to have that verse printed out and put right there. Or you may want to add another sheet where you can put some of these verses on there. And then you may want to even have a time or a space sometimes where you feel like you really need to get a good cleansing and you're going to write out some of that confession. But I always try to encourage people that that part is the very small part of confession. We don't want to spend a lot of energy and time trying to dig up dirt on ourselves because God is not doing that. He just wants to bring us into alignment with his good, pleasing, and perfect will and, and help us to acknowledge where we've gotten out of alignment so that we can get back in. But the other part of confession is probably even more important. And that is, remember, we put things off, but then we're called to put things on. And so we want to confess the truth. We need to confess the things that, that counter the lies that we've believed, the reason that we've gotten ourselves off track. We need to bring the truths into focus. And so I have this prayer pocket here, and you can do this any way you like, but in this one, I have all of these different I am statements about who I am in Christ. These also are in my Etsy shop as well, because these are just really powerful truths that I believe we can all use to renew our minds with the truth of who we are in Christ Jesus. So confessions are not just about the negative, though that's important for the cleansing aspect, but it also is about the positive. You're putting off and then putting on truth. And so I've created this little pocket where I can keep those and you can, you know, meditate on one a day or you can go through the whole list or you can also get um, one of the things I will be including in, in my planner is I'll slip in three by five cards. And as the Lord really ministers to me with a particular truth that I need to be meditating on, I will also include that in the pocket as well. And so this is the confession section. And then the next section begins the supplication. This is where you're making intercession. This is where you're bringing the needs and desires before the Lord. And this is where the organization really, really helps. And like I said, there's 20 pages in this prayer planner kit that you can print off. You're not going to be using all of those you're going to be using different components of it that you'll find work best for you. And then maybe to switch things up and once in a while, you'll want to add another piece or two. 
But in this section, it's kind of just to help you get organized with how you're going to pray things out. And I just really want to walk through this with you. So here is a list that you can uh, kind of think through where you have family, you have friends, you have those that you've heard about that are in need. And then also, of course, we always want to be praying for people for their salvation. So you kind of just, you know, have a, a list that you'll keep fresh. And I always keep a few extras of these in the back as well that I can replace as I need to. But then here is a weekly prayer agenda. And this section is where when you begin to realize you've got several people that you're really wanting to pray consistently, intentionally, and thoroughly for, that can be overwhelming when you start adding on people, right? So we don't have two, three hours a day to pray. We also don't want to be kind of haphazard and just hitting or missing certain people, especially when we have certain people that we really feel called to pray for in a particular season. So you can organize here and begin to lay out a prayer method and um, and schedule certain people that you're going to pray for, certain things you're going to pray for on particular days. So it's not all just hit or miss, but there's actually kind of a methodical way that you're praying through. And, and when we're consistent, when we're organized, when we're strategic, we're going to really begin to see some things move and we're going to really begin to see some answers to prayer because now we're getting really, really deliberate and a little more structured, not to not to restrict how the Holy Spirit might move, but really to give a platform for the Holy Spirit to move. Because as you get more um, organized, then the Lord can really begin to add and highlight and energize your prayer life. So here's a prayer list. You can kind of keep a running list of different things you're praying through with a date. Here's another option for one method of prayer, and that is you can um, you can list here what it is you're praying about, what the specific need is, what scripture you want to pray over, and even write out a prayer. That might be something you want to do on occasion. This particular printout is to lead you in praying for your dreams and your goals. It's always good to have some things that you are believing for for your future and it's good to write them out so that you can go back later and you can see where the hand of God was moving in that area of your life. I also have these where you can what I would call prayer mapping, where you have a specific question that you need some direction from the Lord on, and then you write it out, and then you can begin to um, see where he, he might tell you about a particular passage, um, how that's going to apply, and then even the answer that you're, you're feeling how he's leading you, and then you have a place for reflection. It's just good to trace the hand of God in that area of your life as well. It can give you such confidence in um, asking the Lord really any question you might have. Here's a page you can use to record inspirational prayers. This might be where you put specific printouts of scriptures. And I actually have some, you know, some of these kinds of things that are included also in the prayer planner kit where there's specific promises for prayer, some just little inspiring things you can put on there as well. And of course, you can create your own. You can put stickers in there. And you might be one of those people that really likes occasionally to do a little drawing to kind of illustrate something. I know for some people that's very therapeutic and helpful as well. This particular planner came actually with this nice little um, hard backing, so it gives you a nice place to write on. And then this section is where I am praying really, really specifically and intentionally for other people. And so I would use one of these pages for each of my family members, maybe some specific people that I've committed to praying for. And I know right now I have a handful of people I'm just praying very, very intentionally and specifically for healing for them because they have physical ailments. Um, so this is just a good way to create what I would call a prayer circle based on Mark Batterson's um, you know, drawing the, the prayer circle around people or circumstances or situations. And I loved, I saw on a couple of videos I watched where people had included pictures. And so I decided to make that part of this as well. So you can either put a name here or you can put an actual picture of the person you're praying for. 
So I have three children plus a daughter in love. I have family members, I have a couple friends, I have a spouse, and so I will make up one of these for each of them. I'll put their picture here, I'll put a couple promises maybe I'm believing for, um, what their hopes, their dreams, their ambitions, I wanna be praying into that for them, whatever particular needs they have, and even just as a mom, maybe concerns that I have. And then I'm gonna write out a declaration, something I'm believing for, I'm confessing over their lives. And then I have one of these pages that I would use to maybe write out some specific things. And then here's another thing too. So once you get this filled out, you're not gonna to wanna to be recreating it every couple of weeks, but you might find that there's gonna be things that you wanna to add to it. And so what I have, let's see if I can find this here, is you can get this also on Amazon. I'll have the links for all of the things that I'm talking about in the description below. But this package came with, um, it actually came with these really cute little pins. Um, I don't think I'll be using these in this. I think I'm gonna use these in my Bible study planner instead because these are really, these are fine liners and they would work really good for highlighting verses and so forth. Um, it also has these nice little clips. I'll probably drop a few of those in my pocket here. But then there's also all of these, aren't these lovely? So these are great for when you've filled out something and you need to just update it. You can take one of these or you can take one of these long ones and put it over top and then add to it. So you kind of have these layers of things that you've added to your prayer list. So these are really nice. Um, I think these smaller ones would fit nicely over this, or you know, you can use them bigger on other pages as well. So the, that's just a really nice little thing to have. And you can actually, this will actually, I think you might be able to figure out a way to fit that in there. I'm not sure yet, I haven't figured that part out. But anyways, that's kind of something, a nice little handy thing to have. So then you're going to, um, you can make one of these prayer circles for each person that you are really, really deliberately and intentionally spending a little more time. And they are the ones you're gonna include likely on your weekly prayer agenda that we talked about here. Um, and so I might have one of these on each day that I'm praying for because I'm gonna spend a little more time praying into those. Then I also am going to include, you know, praying for local officials like the police department, the fire department, my mayor, my our supervisors in our city. And also I might have a day where I'm praying for the president or um, our representatives and then any specific promises or notes. And this one I would update, you know, every so often. Hopefully you're not gonna to have to do it more than once a month. It might even be once every quarter, you're gonna do an updated version of this as things kind of change and shift. But again, you're trying to keep this as simple as possible. You don't want this to become this major project where you're trying to fill out all these different forms, but you wanna keep it fresh. You wanna keep it inspirational. You wanna keep it full of um, truth and promises of God. And so one of the things I will add to this too, because I'm gonna be praying for over each of my children, you may have grandchildren, so you could, could create one of these for each of your grandbabies and specifically and strategically be praying over them, specific promises. And I've also created, I'm gonna put a prayer pocket here, and I have these prayer promises that you can pray for your children and grandchildren. You may want to include those. You can take a look at those on my Etsy shop as well. Again, like I said, as I create certain things that I myself want to use and incorporate, I try to make that available for other people as well. And so there are a few other components, but these are the basic ones that are included in the prayer kit to try to help you with getting organized and strategic in your prayer time. And this is a way to create, I believe, a, a nice, full, complete war binder that you can take anywhere with you. Now, I will add one more thing. I did see that there was a handful of people who um, also included what they call a 911 area or a triage area or um, you know an emergency room, so to speak, where they have one section that is devoted just for 
praying for people in emergency situations. Like they know they can just run to that space and they have some cards and promises and some specific things there that they can just go right to it. So what I have though is I don't do that because I have this, it's God's promises for your every need. And so when I have an emergency or a situation where I really need to be, I wanna pray the word of God because that's how you pray powerful prayers. God watches over his word to perform it. God commissions angels into action when we pray his word. And so I've really come to love this, God's promises for your every need. And so I usually have this really, really close, like with my Bible and the prayer binder, I can pray over anything for any problem, any situation, and I can feel confident in doing so because I'm armed with the word of God. And then sometimes when I feel like God really wants me to focus on a particular um, promise for somebody, maybe somebody's in a time of grief in their life, I may grab a couple of these promises, write them out on the three by five card and include them in my prayer circle for that particular individual so that um, I'm praying those particular promises for them on a consistent basis. And I'm telling you, this, I believe, can radically transform your prayer life. And as you begin to pray into this, this is, you're not bound by this. This is just a platform that we're giving space to the Holy Spirit to really energize and amplify our prayer life. And then we can, again, like I said, trace the hand of God through it. And you can get really creative with this. But the main point of a war room prayer binder is to really go to war the way God has called us to. And that's through worship, through the word, and through prayer. And this just creates a really nice way to be able to go anywhere at any time and have something that is organized and planned out and strategic and you can um, then begin to make the most of it. So I hope that's been helpful for you. Again, all the links are in the description below. And I would love if you wanted to email me a picture of your war room prayer binder. I would love to see it. And I'm praying that um, as more and more people really begin to take on this method of praying, that we're going to see the Lord doing mighty, mighty things in the earth in our generation. So God bless you. Until next time.